Uh, hello, this is Mix. I'm going to be doing a real quick overview of what we've done so far on SSB Linear, which is a Scuttlebutt grant that Pete got and that I'm helping out with. Um, so, um, we've also got Ziva here with us. But, uh, um, so, where we've got to so far is we we're looking at three modules. There is something called Scuttle Pole, and this is a high level helper module which um, is designed to give anyone and any client a really nice experience around creating and uh, modifying poles. Uh, we're calling um, the generic thing that we, this SSB Lumio makes a pole because there's going to be different types. There's going to be dot votes. Um, and just choose one as in you're only allowed to choose one option and a couple of other things and these will yeah so the generic thing is called a poll so there's this top level thing called scuttle poll um scuttle being like a reference to hermes being sort of a helper um there's the highest level which is patch bay poll which is using this or will use this to stitch it into patch bay and then there's a really low level thing called SSB poll schema, which just does validation of polls. Um, so we'll start at this level <coughs> to show you a little bit about what Scuttle poll will do. Um, the, the idea is that um, you require in Scuttlebot, Scuttle poll and you give it an instance of a Scuttlebot server or a connection to a server. Um, here you can see this is like being acquired by SSB client, it's a remote connection. And then once you've got Scuttlepoll, an instance of Scuttlepoll, you'll have access to a range of different methods. So I'm going to skip down to the first one to make it a little bit easier. Um, so if this is your Scuttlepoll instance, then uh, you can say poll async get and give it a key and it will return you a really accessible object which has everything that you need already fetched and loaded into a big object. So we're following a decorator pattern which is like this is going to be the key and the value of the raw message, uh, the raw original poll message. But some of these other things are going to be um, decorated on. These are being fetched which are like, the, so the positions in the case of a poll are like all of the different things that people have said and I, I might have changed my mind and said yeah I'm for this but then once the argument progresses a little bit or the conversation progresses a little bit I might have changed my mind. Results is the um, synthesized current state like um, how many people are for or against the idea and that's like a redu reduction of the positions. Um, and errors is really important because uh, in Scuttlebutt Anyone can post whatever message they want, and some of these might be malformed in some ways. Or they, you know, for example, a person might have posted a response after the poll had closed, and you might want to have access to that, even though it's not uh, a valid result. So there's this pattern that we're following, which we've stolen from some of the patch call work, which we've really been enjoying. Uh, helps with naming, and it's that the first uh, key here is whether this is a poll or a position related thing. The second one is what type of function is this? Is it asynchronous, synchronous, or is it an observable thing that we're going to get? And then finally the name. So here's another one. If you want to publish a choose one poll, so this is a poll, async, publish, choose one, then um, this gives you a really easy way to say um, to like create that and under the hood it does all of the creating the um, creating a really great object with all of the details that uh, are needed at a lower level but that you don't need to provide here so for example you need a, a title and an array of choices and optionally a body which describes what this poll's about uh, I think this is actually built now that needs updating okay so there's um this readme is still in progress, but there's going to be a range of things. So there's um, some helper methods like is poll um, position. This is creating a, a position is like the you casting your vote. 
So uh, once a poll exists, you might want to state your position. We, we use the word position instead of vote because um, people have a lot of like baggage associated with votes. It's kind of like uh, majority wins, whereas position is like, here's where I currently stand. You can change where you stand over time. But that's sort of like about this domain. So let's look a little bit under the hood at the code. Um, so this is fairly f thoroughly tested. Um, the root file is um, the root file uses this thing called inject, and it, um, which is just a helper method. And uh, what it does is it takes the instance of the server and the methods and injects servers, the server, like um, injects the server dependency into all of the methods. So it means that we can have sort of canonical definition of all the methods here. This is where the poll.async.choose1 comes from. But if we go and look at poll async publish choose one, uh, it's a function inside a function. So um, we did this so that you can, um, it's quite nice for testing and it means that uh, um, we can have that affordance where a person can instantiate instantiate a scuttle poll instance and they don't always have to be passing a server in. Um, you can go and look at the, the details of let's even take this of what of what that inject does. Um, it actually got ended up getting a little bit more complicated than I would have thought. One of the nice things that inject here does is that it can handle a server instance which is either the, an actual server connection or an observable which will uh, resolve into a server connection. This is a this is something that happens a bit in patch core so it's really useful. Um, so what have we done for testing? I'm just wondering if there's any, I honestly can't remember. Oh uh, yeah, um, so this is actually really good to know about. We're using, um, I think we are using a module that Pete wrote. Let me just forgive me for a moment while I, yeah. So with this module called Scuttle Testbot, so you can go and read about that, but it's been really useful for testing. Basically, it uh, means that you're not publishing to your main feed. It just creates a new account in your temp folder or something like that. And what it can do, so the way we're using it here is instantiating a server like this. And then we're creating different feeds. So here's Katie and Pete. And it means that um, uh, this is a little bit fancy, but I'm making a pull stream which posts a series of events um, choices. So I had to create a, um, I had to publish, have Pete publish a poll first, and then as a callback to that, then I can point at the poll. Um, so you could do this all with mock data, but what we've found with testing with Scuttlebot, Scuttlebot is that um, there's quite a few details that you can get wrong. So you can have your like mock data you think's minimal enough and then you go and try and use it in production and it's like, nope, there was another key here uh, that's not valid or something. So a little bit more setup, but seems to pay off quite well. Um, one gotcha is that, is a gotcha. So this server is like a fully fledged server, has the full API. Katie and Pete have like a subset of the API. Um, that a normal SBOT would have. Um, unfortunately, I can't remember all of the details of that right now. I think when it comes to getting data, so yeah, on done, let's have a look at what we've done.
Oh, so this is me testing the getter for like getting all the details. Um, I think, yeah, so I think you have to use the, the like sort of master server because I think these KTM Pete don't have some of the full lookup um, API that you might that you need, but it's kind of fine, doesn't matter who does the looking up. All right, so zooming back out, we are, this was us looking at Scuttlepole. Um, please ask questions about it if you're not, if what I've said isn't clear. Um, um, we're really excited about how it's coming together. Um, yeah, so I, I can't show you it used in um, in Patch Bay yet because we're still getting there, but I can show you something like an earlier version of this with Scuttleblog, um, what the pattern ends up looking like, and it's really, really satisfying. So here we are with um, Scuttleblog. Um, here's instantiating it. This is the um, in Patch Core. This is an observable Scuttlebot um, server connections, which you know may or may not be there. It sort of phases in and out, and then. Um, and then here the API for Scuttleblog is just go obs get and then message. So this actually returns an observable which you can just then use later on. You can just go blog.title blog.body and you don't even have to think about, uh, you don't need to know about the details under the hood that blogs are actually stored as blobs and that the body was actually loaded in asynchronously through and you know like somebody had to manage going and fetching those blobs. Ziva, not into it, huh? Um, okay, I might have to move a little bit quicker. Um, I can show you what we've done in Patch Bay Poll, which is the high level work so far. Um, there's a couple of things I'm really excited about here. Um, Ziva, take this. How about this, Mr. Spoon? Boop, boop, boop. Um, So what I've done here is uh, the folder structures to be determined, <clears throat> but we've got, I've got a meta modules folder, which is all of the patch bay related modules. Um, so if you're familiar with patch bay or patch work, that's fine. Um, and then I've very deliberately made a views folder, which is completely separate from all of that patch bay and patch core stuff. And you'll see that it's basically just a view which has some dependency injection. Injection. If you've done sort of React, this ends up looking a lot like React. Um, and there's not that much logic um, that should be going on. And that feels really great. So the scuttle pole that is passed in is a, an instantiated scuttle pole which already has a server baked into it, ready to go. This is, again, really nice for testing. Um, yeah, and so that's what I'd show you there. And then like test-wise, I'm using Donectar's Electro, which is super sweet. So I can go Electro um, test do views. No, it's not as well done. Ta-da. And um, so I've made a test. I've made a test file which just requires in that index view and then there's a um, some mock poll and I think yeah I think that's hmm I can't remember my own code right now that's embarrassing but um, it just basically just spins up an instance of part of that view mocks whatever content is needed oh I think this is me faking I'm looking at the wrong view. This makes more sense. So here's me mocking out what a an active um, Scuttlepole instance would look like, and then passing it into the page. And then here's me providing a callback, which doesn't do anything. It just console logs out. <clears throat> and it means I can really actively, uh, really quickly develop this in isolation, um, which is super fun. 
and you can reload it um, really quickly. Whereas reloading a full um, Scuttlebot client can take a little bit of time. So that's the main thing to learn about there that um, I think you should know about. Uh, moving on to SSB poll schema. So as we were making as we were making scuttle poll, we found that there was that we needed that we wanted to um, be really tight about how we were validating the polls and positions that were flowing into this into our helper module. And um, this was starting to clutter our code because it got quite um, involved. So um, what do we end up doing? Maybe let's look at the module on the readme. So um, I think there's only a couple of methods that are provided. There's, oh, there's this concept where we've got these validators. So you can specifically, you can say generically, is this thing a poll and give it a message? Or you can say, is this a particular type of poll? Is this a choose one message, for example? And then <clears throat> we've got the secondary idea of a parser, which is, um, it's, um, so this is us taking a first pass at pass, first, first attempt at um, versioning uh, of message types, which is something that Scuttlebutt's needed for a while. And the idea is that um, there could actually be multiple different definitions of a poll or a choose one poll. Um, as we proceed, we might find that we need to add a new uh, attribute to a poll and we don't want our validator to just say to throw it out if it's a version 2 sort of poll versus a version 1 poll. So what we've got is this idea of you you can pass it and say is it a poll and further than that you can actually say well what version of poll was it and then um, and then pass poll uses um, it's kind of like a it normalizes the output of the poll so if you've got a version 2 poll, which is structure, which structure has changed a bit, you can provide a pass, a parser, which yeah, normalizes. Um, and then Pete's done a bunch of great thinking about when you should know if you should increase a version. So let's look at what it does, um, what it looks like under the hood a little bit. Um, so here's the current schema. So we're using JSON schema, uh, which if you haven't used is really fantastic. Um, and then yeah, I'm a little bit surprised that this top level schema, I need to revise why that's there, but nevertheless. Um, so there's this under version one, under the version one folder, and there might be version two folders in the future. We've got a definition of what our um, poll schema should look like of what our poll should look like defined in the schema um, and then probably don't have time to get into it right now but um, the way that this is all combined is actually using Dejet which is pretty fun Ziva hello yeah Go for a walk after this, okay? Um, so, what you need to know about Depject is it collects all of the. Um, we're having it collect all of the different part um, is poll definitions um, that have been provided in, say, sockets poll is poll, and then um, when you run is poll, it just goes. It applies every is poll definition. And return, and if any of them return true, then the answer is true. And similar with pass poll, um, it will try all of the passes until it finds the first one which is valid. And the schemas are so tight that you don't really need to worry about the order in which it's done, um, specifically because uh, all of our schemas, sorry, all of our messages now have a version field that's required on them. So. <coughs> That's, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, so this is a, 
This one has a little bit more complicated looking wiring because it's using Depject, and if you're not familiar with that, it's a little bit different. But um, again, please ask about it. Um, we're really excited about it. Um, yeah, I think I'll leave it there for the moment. Say bye, Ziva.